Okay, so yesterday was uh, Friday the 13th. Um, the Dow Jones closed at 29,479. I think I made a couple of posts to my uh, Facebook and my YouTube community about uh, rising stock prices. But the one that really, really, really shocked me yesterday was NEO. Now, I had been telling people to get into NEO way back when we had the economic crash in March of this year. And had you gotten in in March, you would have, let's see, you would have probably bought in March 18th. You would have probably bought in at about $3, give or take $3, right? So if you had bought in at that point in NEO, if you had spent $100, just $100, and you had bought these shares at $3, right now, your shares would be worth $44.75. However, yesterday, they shot up to $54. Let's see where it is. The $54 mark. Yes. And um, it was at $54. I thought it was going to keep going up at that point, and I started contacting family members. I was telling them, hey, look, look at Neil, look at Neil. Neil's fifty four dollars. It's like, what are you going to do? You going to sell it? You going to keep it? I know a couple of people. I, I think the interesting thing about it is, and, and by the way, I've lived in China, and uh, they had a number of uh, Chinese car manufacturers. Most of the cars were relatively low quality, but the thing about it is there were companies like Dongfeng and Maytian Motors, and, and there was a bunch, Cherry Motors, this was, this was a while back, but uh, and there was also Geely Motors, and they, they basically make a lot of generic clone cars, and they look alike. They look like, uh, you know, more expensive, well-known German brands. But uh, ultimately, these electric cars are going to do better because they use fewer parts and they also use fewer parts of contention. China's trying to get rid of the gas engine. Like, that's the bottom line. Europe is trying to get rid of the gas engine. China's trying to get rid of the gas engine. The difference between America and China is that if the Chinese government says, yeah, we're going to get rid of the gas engine, you don't got a choice, we're going to make it illegal to buy anything else, you're going to either buy an electric car or you're going to be walking. Well, China doesn't have a problem getting people to adapt to electric cars because they don't give you an option. It's like you're just going to do it and that's it. And that's the reason why with us knowing that, it's easy to invest in their market because pretty much anything the government in China wants, the government in China is going to get. So um, they have three main companies that we should be looking at for electric cars. I would, if you do invest in Chinese autos at all, like regular cars, you might as well stop. Electric cars are where you should be looking. Neo is obviously one of them. Every single week, every single month, they're making new highs. Um, some people have asked me, is it too late to invest in NEO? I would say absolutely not. It is not too late to invest in NEO. If you want to invest in NEO, even at these highs, I, you know, you could still get in. I mean, yeah, it's going to cost you more per share, but you can still get in. Definitely. Candy right now is the cheapest. Candy recently got their, uh, clearance to start selling, their uh, electric vehicles in America. Now, I will say Candy, 
their cars look like shit. And just judging from the looks of these things, I could tell that they're going to probably do well in India and they're probably going to do well in, uh, how should I say, smaller nations like the ones that are island nations. Because if you go to these island nations, island nations typically have um, small vehicles. Um, island nations do have problems generating electricity. However, because we also have solar infrastructures being developed and on top of that, uh, you know, they have better and improving electric infrastructures. Ultimately, smaller nations would prefer to have electric cars than to have gasoline-powered cars. Because if you have gas-powered cars, now you have to have oil shipments coming in through tankers. And a lot of island nations would probably like to get rid of that. And they'd like to be able to produce their own energy or at least uh, use renewable energy where it's uh, no risk of oil spills and whatnot. So eventually, cars just like this, as ugly as it may be, they're going to end up in small island nations like Seychelles, Maldives, and other places like that. But and in the long run, it's probably cheaper for the people who operate them because it's fewer parts, for one, and then on top of that, it's, uh, it's less pollution. So it'll be easier for them to get around uh, the taxation associated with, um, how should I say, gas guzzlers. Then there's XPEV, XPeng Incorporated. XPeng was up just like Neo was. And um, one of the things I love about the Apple Stocks app is you can do your own research, and it's relatively easy because the stock news is coming directly to you. So you're not just looking at numbers. And if you actually spend a lot of time to educate yourself by just reading the stock news, it'll give you more... Um, understanding of what's going on at any given time and it'll under give you the understanding about you know where you can best invest your money. So what I can say is this um, XPEV, Lee, Neo, Candy, those are the four places where you want to focus your money. Right now again candy is relatively cheap. Candy went down over time from a high of twelve dollars to right now it was seven dollars twenty two cents. But um, the thing about it is they flirted with uh, the $10 mark on more than one occasion. And as time goes on, um, you know, we'll look back and we'll be like, damn, I wish I had gotten in when it was $7, you know. It's one of those things. It's just like when I bought Tesla. I mean, if you really think about it, Neo right now is $44. XPEV is $41. When I put my money into Tesla, it was at $30. So... Um, I mean, if you really think about it, given that we know that electric vehicles are coming, we know that it's the next big thing. I mean, right now is the time that you could put your money into these things. Now, if you don't have the money right now and you're waiting for tax returns or whatever, there's nothing wrong with that. It, you know, my, my thinking is considering the pacing of Lee, Neo, and XPEV, chances are these shares might be 10 to $20 higher come tax season. And I can look back on this video then and I can say whether I was wrong or right. But um, I'm just looking at the trend and the trend is nothing but up because all of these companies are delivering their cars right now. Now, I should also point out FCA. I told you to get into Chrysler FCA and um, that was back in, uh, what was it, uh, March. The high that we're seeing right now is about 14.57, but back in March 18th, Shit was down to seven dollars, damn near. It was less than seven dollars. So I wish you had gotten in then. But if you did get in then, you've doubled your money on FCA. Now, as far as FCA's future goes, that's where I'm concerned because my thing is there's no way that Chrysler is going to be able to keep making gas guzzling Hemis. They can't do it. It's like they're just not going to be able to do it. So my guess is they're going to have to move on to electric vehicles. Now. Fiat Chrysler, obviously, you know, part of that's over there in uh, Italy, Fiat portion of it. They're focused on EVs now. And because, you know, Europeans aren't huge, fat, morbidly obese Americans like morbidly obese Americans are, they can actually fit in these pathetic little clown cars. But um, we need gigantic Ram trucks, Dodge Chargers, Challenges. We can't fit all of our needs in these pathetic little stupid Fiat 500s. So my thing is keep all that bullshit over there 
and make it so that we have the cool cars that y'all can't get because your streets are small. And if you tried to get a Dodge Charger Hellcat on one of those streets, you wouldn't even be able to turn a corner because the uh, the streets are small. It's like, so you keep that stupid stuff over there and let us focus on better things. But um, ultimately, they're going to be forced into electric vehicles. Now, they already tried the Pacifica electric plug-in hybrid, and uh, that was getting like 80 miles to a gallon. That's all good and everything, but we're trying to get rid of the gas engine entirely. And that's because electric vehicles perform considerably better than a four-cylinder or a V6, and they do it at a considerably lower maintenance cost, and they also do it at a considerably lower cost to run these vehicles, because ultimately it's like you drive, you get home, you plug it in, or you go to work, you plug it in, and the bottom line is the thing is charging and ready to be driven as many miles as it can drive when you're finished with work or when you wake up in the morning. So ultimately, you know, a gas engine can't compete with that, especially if it's not a supercharged V8. Like if you're dealing with a four cylinder or V6, you might as well be driving an electric vehicle. And that's the real, once people drive electric vehicle, if they came out of one of those shitty Toyotas or a Honda or something, they're like, oh my God, this is incredible. It's so fast. Oh my God, this thing's incredible. And you mean I don't have to pay for gas? Wow, that's incredible. So once they come out of one of those pathetic boring small displacement engines it's like they never want to go back and um electric vehicles are going to make it happen able to be purchased for less than forty thousand dollars i mean you know the fourth cylinder They'll be fine. Microsoft dipped down to two hundred dollars. It's back to two sixteen. Uh, most of these companies are still making a lot of money off the fact that people are working at home. So uh, work at home is um, allowing more people to you know buy into these subscription services, and that's really helping a lot of these companies. I'm also glad to see AIM Immunotech is back above $2. I bought into AIM Immunotech as well as CTIC, but CTIC outperformed AIM Immunotech. If I could do it all over again, the money that I put into AIM, I would have put directly into CTIC. But you know what? Hindsight's 2020 vision, and I did like to diversify. You never want to have all your money in one place. Goodyear Tire is slowly uh, making a rise again, despite the fact that that moron Trump tried to boycott it, that idiot, that loser. I can't wait till he's sworn out and they pack up his stuff in a nice big U-Haul with Goodyear Tires on it, throw him out of the White House. I can't wait. That moron. His hair's turning gray lately. I don't know what's going on with him. I think it's all that suffering and whining and shit and crying after he lost the election, after we showed up to vote him out. Supposedly, there's supposed to be a big MAGA rally in Washington. But uh, since uh, you're not allowed to have bring guns there, it's like um, a lot of those people who would have showed up aren't going to show up because, you know, they're a bunch of cowards who stay home because they're not safe without their weapons. So they don't go anywhere. They don't experience anything new. And they just stay in their small-minded, small trailer park community, and they just cry themselves to sleep as we throw their cult member leader out of the White House. So, uh, you know, that's actually good to see. But uh, anyway, GoPro has been doing pretty well. I didn't buy into GoPro because um, I just don't see the point. I'd rather spend my money in Apple or another tech company like Google. But, I mean, GoPro has been coming up. I mean, you know, they came, they, they're, they're starting to make a comeback. They're doing direct sales directly to the home. They came March, what is it, 18th. They were a little under $3 and they doubled their money to about uh, $7 almost. $7.14. Okay, so they're doing pretty good. 
But um, I, I took my money out of GoPro. Um, I, I got out before it uh, started wet going down. I shorted it. So um, eventually I may remove that symbol. I took the bulk of my money out of there. But um, let's see. Marijuana stocks. One thing you'll probably notice, they're all in the green. Cannab Cannabis Corp, Cannabis Sativa. All of these marijuana stocks are on their way up. I'm just waiting for President Kamala Harris to completely legalize marijuana everywhere. I got New Jersey's got legal weed. South Dakota, Mississippi. Uh, who else? Who else? Uh, there's a couple other places that have they, they're legalizing weed. I think it's Arizona, too. Well, um, give it some time. Give it some time. But uh, I've, I've got... Of each one of these things, I have more than 10,000 shares that I bought when they were just pennies. And I was just watching my money just do nothing and sit there. And now it's finally starting to move up. You know, over 10,000 shares in each, man. It's like if these things even go to a dollar, if they just go to one dollar, it's like I'll have killed it. I'll have killed it. So uh, who else? Uh, airlines seem to be in the green, which is nice. Nice to see them in the green. I guess they're helping the uh, Dow start to move up. The uh, financials, the banks, uh, they're doing pretty well. Uh, tech, NVIDIA has been doing well. AMD is down from their high of 90, but I'm not worried about AMD. AMD, I believe within a year or two, AMD is easily going to be past $100. So this 81 that I'm looking at is going to be 100 plus. But my thing is, I was telling you to buy AMD and Logitech when they were $50 or below. Um, so, you know, hopefully you got in there. Because if you did, you, uh, you, you're up at least $30 from when I told you to get those. But uh, that's good. Um, Warren Buffett put a lot of money into SiriusXM. SiriusXM had been wavering below $5 for a while. In fact, I, <laughs> they, they started to make their moves. So that's pretty good. You know, but um, a lot of people... There's so many subscription services. You got to be careful with that. Because if there's ever... If there's ever a backlash against subscription services because people realize that they're spending so much money, well, you could end up getting, uh, you know, uh, you could end up getting screwed. So if you didn't buy it when it was at its low, you know, consider whether or not you want to buy it. Uh, Zoom is really weird to me. Zoom has the highest volatility of most of these tech stocks that I've seen. It's like I'll look at Zoom. And let's see, Zoom over the last three months, Zoom has gone up and down. It made a high of, what is that, 568, and then it started plummeting. And the people are still using Zoom, um, so it's, it's actually kind of weird because people are still using it because a lot of people are still working from home. Um, I know Zoom, you know, they imposed a 40-minute meeting limit or something, and they said that they were going to lift it for Thanksgiving. Um, so my thing is, unless you bought Zoom during the come-up, um, chances are you've already probably shorted it. That's the reason why these, it's going through these tremendous... Look at these dips. It went from 441 down to freaking 370. Now, this was all within... This was a week. 443, boom, down to 370, and then it went right back up to 430. I mean, the, the, the volatility has been crazy in that. So my guess is, I mean, if you bought into Zoom a long time ago, you know, you're probably doing well. But my guess is most people have already probably started shorting it. And that's because, uh, you know, to, to, to walk away with this money. My mother might end up in a uh, Cadillac Lyric. Who knows? I don't know how long she's going to avoid going electric. But um, I think uh, ultimately if she were to go to electric, she'd probably pick a Cadillac over a Tesla because it's just more comfortable. Tesla's interiors suck. So um, we'll see what happens with that. 
But uh, I was telling you to get into GM when it was only $20. So if you got it when I told you, you've doubled your money at this point. But I knew GM was going to be making highs because I knew that with, uh, you know, once we came out of the pandemic, I knew because they were making PPE. And I also knew because they were focusing on electric vehicles for the future. I knew they were going to be doing pretty well. So, yeah, it's good to see GM doing pretty well. And, and once again, with all these electric vehicle companies and even these regular automotive manufacturers who are making the switch, it's not too late to invest in them. So you don't have to ask me, is it too late? You're not late. You're just going to end up paying more money to get in. So it's not that you're late. I mean, you think about it. I, you know, I bought into Tesla thirty dollars. If I could have gotten in at fifteen, I would have been better off than thirty. But I mean, I sold over a thousand. So you know, it's not you know, it's not that you're too late. It's just that it's going to be more expensive. You know, that's that's the mindset you have to adopt. It's never. It's not really too late, especially considering this market's on the come up. You know, a lot of vehicles get destroyed every year because of floods. And as these things get destroyed, people are moving towards EV. These natural disasters are occurring more frequently, which is forcing the globe to focus on moving towards renewable energy. Like, I know a lot of Trump supporters and idiots in the right wing, they want, oh, global warming's fake. That's not happening. Oh, oh, wait a minute. It's November 14th, and right now outside it's 67 degrees. Don't worry about that. It's not global warming. Or or if they do say, okay, yeah, it does exist and climate change exists, and then they try to go with you on semantics, global warming versus climate change. Because the reality of it is every geologist knows the earth is actually not warming up. It's actually cooling down. And that's because earth gets its geothermal heat from uranium as it breaks down and turns to lead. However, the atmosphere has been warming up because more and more humans are being born. We're approaching 8 billion as a population of the world. And the issue is we're using, you know, fossil fuels to uh, grow our meat, like cows and, and chickens and all that, and pigs. And we're, we're doing a lot of damage to the environment that we live in. But one thing that you'll notice from coronavirus, coronavirus kept these people inside under threat of death. And during that time, the skies cleared up, the water cleared up, the animals started reclaiming the land. Humans always said, oh my God, if we go, it'll take thousands of years for this to return itself. Earth said, fuck all that. Earth said, stay inside or you're going to die from this virus. And then all of a sudden, everything started returning to normal. It's just amazing. All you had to do was lock these stupid people inside and threaten their lives with coronavirus. And all of a sudden, the water clears up. The sky is beautiful. You, you saw the planes. The planes were locked down on the ground. They couldn't fly. And all of a sudden, the skies are beautiful. Now, all of a sudden, you can see the moon easy. You can see the stars easily. You can see Mars and Jupiter. And you're like, wait a minute. They told us that it would take hundreds of years for the Earth to come back. And sure enough, no, it did not. It took weeks. It took a couple of weeks. Just a couple of weeks. So the governments who are behind all that, uh, what is it called, climate change, preparation and everything... They are right in a sense. They are right. We, if we poison our environment, it causes more poverty, it causes more pollution, more poverty, and it's a cycle. However, if every human died right now, oh, the world will be just fine. The deers are going to take over your house. The bears are going to get in your car and you'll be dead and everything and they'll just chew on your body. So the thing about it is nature's not worried about you. The, the, even if the roaches become the dominant species, nature is not worried about you at all. So we have to basically worry about ourselves. And that's the focus of the electric vehicle. That's the focus of renewable energy. We have to invest in these things. Otherwise, poverty is just going to keep on going up. And these right wingers, oh, well, why are these people voting for socialism? Well, they're voting for socialism because poverty keeps going up, stupid. And they just don't get it. And I'm not for socialism. I'm, I'm actually highly capitalist and corporatist. In fact, I've been accused of being a statist. However, the reality is these people, these young people are going to vote for socialism if they don't get 
an environment that creates a business earning opportunity that they can appreciate. They're not going to work for pennies. They're not going to work for less than a living wage. They're not going to work jobs that don't give them health care and basic uh, health support. They're not going to do it. They're going to turn on you and they're going to put somebody just like Biden and Kamala Harris into office because they promised them that they're going to make better $15 minimum wages and all this stuff. You should never wonder why people are voting for socialism. If the, if the poverty increases, people are going to vote that way. It, it shouldn't be rocket science. It's not. It's obvious why they're doing it. Now, the bottom line I have is how do you make money off of the way people think? And if you can understand the way people think and the way people trend, that's how you make your money. So bottom line is that's all I really had to say. So I don't, I don't do these updates regularly. I know some people jump on there and talk about it every single day, like when they're trying to pump and dump Bitcoin like Trayvon James, but I don't do that. So, uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. So for the market going ahead, electric vehicles. Originally, I wanted to invest in the airlines, but they're not going to be profitable for a long time. And now I realize that because this coronavirus shit, we're talking about a second freaking lockdown possibly. It's like, <laughs> it's going to be a while before you can even fly on a plane and be able to sit next to somebody. They're not going to let you sit next to anybody. It's going to be crazy. So it's going to be a while before that happens. The cruise lines too. The cruise line stocks are up. But guess what? Even with cruise line stocks and airline stocks up, them shit still ain't moving because you can't go nowhere. Because the country is a lockdown. So... What is moving? Electric vehicles are moving. Uh, tech stocks are going to keep moving. As you know, I got my iPhone 12 and my Apple Watch 6 yesterday, so I just put God knows how much money into Apple yesterday. But uh, those things are moving. And, and video gaming, PS5, they sold out all these goddamn PS5s, all these Xboxes, and those things are both crap compared to computer gaming. I don't want either one of them. If I saw one in the store, I'd probably leave it there or I'd just call somebody else to buy it. I don't want one. I have a computer that's a beast. I can run anything. So it's like I'm not even thinking about that. But that's the reason why the tech stocks are so high. NVIDIA, AMD, Logitech, they're selling game controllers. They're selling all these uh, parts. It's like that's the reason why their stocks are skyrocketing because people are locked up at home. So for right now, you're portfolio should reflect you buying stocks that focus on the fact that number one people are staying home what do they do when they stay home well they're watching television they're watching subscription services like disney netflix so forth and so on and uh they're they're working from home so they need business solutions to work at home that's how you need to think about it. It's going to be a long time before we get back to normal and i know people are pissed off and they don't want to wear their masks but, uh, you know, if you try to walk into one of these stores without masks, you're going to get your ass beat up and tased. And don't think just because you bring a gun with you it's going to help because if the cops show up and light your ass up, it's like I'm going to be watching it on YouTube, which, by the way, is a subscription.